Hi, I'm George Kay, and this is my father Niels. Welcome back to another episode of Father and Synthesizer, episode 22 already. Today is going to be the final episode on our analog mixer for now, and today is all about a chorus. And without further ado, let's listen to what we've got. Right, welcome back uh, to the studio. Here we've got the little angel chorus. Let's give it a listen. Okay, up the speed a little. That sounds pretty standard. It just sounds like a chorus, like any old chorus would. Now, let's do some magic to this. Let's plug it into the chorus 60. And as for the signal chain, today I'm not running through the wavetable synthesizer and the melody fountain, which you can't see, but instead I'm using my, let me just, I'm using this bad boy today, because I really love the sound of the bass synthesizer. Right, so down here we have the Chorus 60. It's got the controls that any of our uh, channel strip modules have. It's got a blend knob to switch between the chorus and the non-chorus. Then we have speed and depth as well as volume and auxiliary send and a mute button down there. Here on the speed you might uh, notice some dots drawn on by marker. There are specific frequencies. For example, here we have 0.5 Hz, then up here we have 0.8 and 1 Hz. Those are the uh, rates of the original Juno 60 chorus. So let's start with the let's start with the 0.5 Hz. Full depth and no blend. So this is just the clean signal. nothing. Now let me turn the blend. And you can hear the noise already. That's that classic Juno filter noise. Okay, let's turn it up to 0.8. That would be setting 2 on the Juno. And 1 kilohertz with 8% depth. And the uh, LFO technically would have to be a sine wave, but it's a triangle here. So let's check out that. That would be settings 1 and 2 combined on the Juno. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound quite like the original thing, but I love this chorus sound. It sounds so stereo. And there you have it. That's our chorus. And it sounds fantastic. Okay, now that you've heard our choruses, let's talk about them. So choruses were something completely new to us before uh, building these modules. And the first thing we built was the Little Angel Chorus. We never built a chorus before and uh, frankly I didn't know exactly what it is. So we googled the net a little bit and found a quite simple design with a uh, BBD chip. Yeah, with a, with a very simple BBD chip. Yeah, it's a PT2399. Which luckily we had lying around since we built the, uh, the Music Promoter Space Delay Unit, which is uh, using the same chip. Right. So that seemed to be a, a nice place to start. PCB was quickly built, populated, and uh, to my great surprise, it actually worked. Yeah, right first from time. the start. <laughs> <laughs> first try. Yeah. Um, yeah, then we just slapped a faceplate on that and called it a chorus mm -hmm. for the little angel chorus. And uh, then we thought, hmm, this sounds really cool. How about another channel strip? We do need another channel strip in our mixer. So we thought a channel strip has to be stereo and this chorus is only mono. So how do we get it stereo? First, I think you uh, pitched that we could just add a panning mixer to it so we could yeah. uh, pan it left or right. But that kind of defeats the purpose of a chorus for me. So we decided on the stereo chorus. Then we had a little Google and found one design by uh, Behringer. I think it was a clone of the uh, Roland CE chorus. And uh, we checked the output stage of that because it only had one BBD chip in there. And we thought, how could that be stereo? How are they, how are they doing that? 
and uh, turns out the output has two different filters on it. One on the left, one on the right, and they are set slightly differently. One is a high pass, one is a low pass, if I remember right. Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, that's, that's a bit cheaty, isn't it? That's not really stereo, is it? That's just a modified mono signal. And so we decided uh, to look for another stereo chorus, and I mentioned we already know the greatest chorus on Earth is the Juno 60, the Roland Juno 60 chorus. And of course we didn't have the right chips because they are horrendously expensive. So we thought, what can we do with the material we have at hand? And big question, how is uh, Roland doing the stereo effect? Turns out, from the schematics we read, it turns out that um, they use two delay chips. And yeah, which, uh, I thought as much because they always said you had to buy them in pairs. Right. So two chips, that makes sense, but two chips doing exactly the same, no sense in that. Yeah, it's um, exactly the same, it's right. mono, just more. Right. So what's the trick? The trick is really that they um, control the first chip with an LFO trinal signal and the second chip with the inverted LFO triangle signal. So phase uh, shifted by 180 degrees. Indeed. So and one of the triangles goes up like this while the other goes down like that. Uh -huh. So the effect then in theory, correct me if I'm wrong, would be that in the stereo field your signal goes from left to right. Is yeah, it feels like it's moving around, it feels bigger. Yeah. We found another design that uh, exactly using such a method of uh, chorus and modified that for our purposes. So it fits into our mixer stand standard. Yeah. And so Niels, what problems did we encounter during this build? Well, um, very little actually, but one major one. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem was um, George asked me to, to join him in his studio and uh, just, I, I, was, I said, Come, come here, have a listen to this. And, and Neil was like, no, I can't hear it. Uh, I'm everything not an engineer, sounds fine. Can, everything sounds exactly the yeah. same. Then I told him to sit down in the sweet spot of my monitors. And then I turned the signal with using the blend knob back to the clean signal. And suddenly it felt like your brains were being pulled out of your ears. And, and any experienced audio engineer will know what that means. It means one of the stereo channels has, an, has a 180 degree phase flip on it. So when you turn it to mono, which then I did, press the mono button on my controller, everything went away, the entire signal was gone, which is a very clear sign for a phase shift. Right. The culprit was uh, found quickly because uh, we had to, to uh, add the, the chorus signal to the aux send. Uh, I needed an additional adding stage, well, and adding stage. And, um, so for the one channel, we go in through a normal inverting adding stage, then through the second one, we go through two inverting adding stages. Hence, a phase shift of 180 degree. So uh, fixing this was really easy. I just needed another uh, resistor and uh, modified the, the output adder to, from inverting to non-inverting adding. And then everything was fine again. The mono compatibility was kept and it didn't sound like your brain was being ripped out by your ears anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, all those changes already went into the, the design we will show you later. Then we had the second problem, which was a bit more difficult to solve. When I turned on the chorus, it was very, very, very noisy. How do you solve something like that? It's just, this is in the analog world, it's noise is a thing. You just have to accept that noise is, noise is always going to be there. But this was so much noise. When I, when I turned my monitors up a little, so I could play a, bit a little bit louder, the noise was louder than the kick drum almost. So, how do we fix that? Yeah, there's um, the question, where does this noise come from? Part of, of it is definitely from the uh, BBD chips. But another part comes or came from uh, the power supply. So in order to, to reduce that, you add a very small value resistor in, into the power line, for example, in the, into the 12 volt, and a very big capacitor to ground. And after, 
After that, you supply your integrated circuits. So again, I modified the PCB um, to take care of that for the plus 12 volt, minus 12 volt, and for the five volt uh, power supply. Which the BBDs need, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, George tested it again. Sounded a little better. Then we upped it once more. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the noise is bearable. Just about. But uh, just to be safe, we have also ordered a couple of uh, Dolby noise reduction chips. Because I have a tape deck up in my studio and it has one of those Dolby noise reduction buttons and that seemed to work fairly well against uh, white noise. So It's an not, experiment. Yeah, why not try? <laughs> we have a little uh, kind of tape-ish master effect planned for that. that maybe it's going to happen, we don't know. We'll see how, how, we'll see how well it works. Because I never learn, I ordered those chips from China. So, who guess what we're gonna get? That's I don't know. <laughs> Probably gonna be fake chips. Quite possible. And uh, that was that for the content of this episode, but we have another very special thing. Last week I received a message on YouTube from, uh, from YouTube user Jumping Spider Design, and uh, he asked us some questions about a wavetable synthesizer as uh, they had built one. And uh, we, we wrote a few messages back and forth. It's all visible on the, yeah, YouTube's, on the, in the YouTube comments for the wavetable, uh, for the second part of the wavetable synthesizer video. And uh, they actually sent a video of them playing the uh, wavetable synthesizer. And it's the coolest thing ever to have someone actually build one of our modules. We're super excited about yeah. that. And uh, if you, dear viewer, are building or are considering building one of our modules, please feel free to send us a message on our Instagrams, uh, preferably Niels's for the more technical questions. And uh, our website also has a contact form and that goes directly to my email inbox. So please contact us if you're working on anything. We're super excited to uh, see these projects come to life. And uh, we're also going to be featuring your video because here is Jumping Spider Design playing our wavetable synthesizer as an outro. So always remember, stay, stay curious. curious.